What's up you guys and welcome to another video. Now before we get started, I just wanted to congratulate you all because we as a chess community have made it to the New York Times. So let's see what they wrote. Cheating allegation looms over elite chess. Magnus Carlsen, the World Chess Championship winner, continues his protest against Hans Niemann. Magnus Carlsen left Hans Niemann in the third round of the Sinkfoot Cup in St. Louis. All right. The chess world has been shaken by a cheating accusation at the highest level of play since Magnus Carlsen's loss to Hans Niemann and the Sigfield Cup on September 4th and Mr. Carlsen's subsequent decision to withdraw from the tournament. When they were paired again last week in the Julius Baer Generation Cup, Mr. Carlsen resigned in protest without making a second move in the game. Mr. Neiman was eliminated from that event in the quarterfinals, but this did nothing to quell the rumors of impropriety that swirled around his play after his victory with the black pieces over Mr. Carlson. Neither Mr. Neiman nor a representative for Mr. Carlson responded to request for a comment. In Mr. Carlson's first public statement since the Julius Baer Generation Cup, he said on Twitter on Monday, I believe that Neiman has cheated more and more recently. Then he has publicly admitted, Mr. Carlson added. Throughout our game in the Singfoot Cup, I had the impression that he wasn't tense or even fully concentrating on the game in critical positions, while playing me as black in a way I think only a handful of players can do. Mr. Carlson's statement sent shockwaves through the chess world just seven days before the US Championship, an elite 14-player round robin tournament in which Mr. Neiman is seated eight. I thought it was actually a 12-player round robin, but I might be mistaken. Uh, the international governing body of chess, known as FIDE, recently reminded players of a number of rules regarding cheating allegations, including penalties for players who make manifestly unfounded complaints. The rules are meant to deter players from accusing others without concrete evidence. Mr. Carlson's statement did not include evidence to support his accusation. There's more that I would like to say, he wrote. Unfortunately, at this time, I'm limited in what I can say without explicit permission from Neiman to speak openly. In 2013, Borislav Ivanov, a FIDE master, was accused of cheating by using a device hitting in his shoes, and his refusal to remove his shoes at the request of an arbiter was taken as an admission of guilt. Mr. Ivanov became a paria in the world of professional chess and was stripped of his title. Many in the chess world believe that if Mr. Neiman does not allow Mr. Carlson to speak freely on the subject, the younger grandmaster will be treated similarly. Now, fun fact, I believe the game in which Ivanov was caught was actually against Hans's coach, Maxim Dlugi, but let's keep going. Fides policy is designed to discourage unfounded complaints and prevent false positives, an instance in which an innocent player is wrongly accused. In fact, the organization may punish people who make cheating complaints without strong evidence. But the desire of many players and spectators is an anti-cheating detection model that ensures no one is able to cheat and get away with it. FIDE sets an extremely high bar for pro proving cheating. David Hayter, an international arbiter with extensive experience in this area, said in an email that the minimum standard that FIDE will accept as a presumptive evidence that a person violated fair play is 99.998% probability that the person did in fact cheat. In other words, 99.9% .9 is not good enough. Now, I wonder what constitutes to this 99.998% probability. I mean, I guess if you're getting caught with a phone in the bathroom or if, let's say, a device is, is found. But I guess perhaps uh, engine game, engine play correlation might not be good enough. Um, so we'll see. Mr. Hader said, in every case that I have personally seen, the probability that the person cheated is significantly above the minimum, he added. In order to prevent false positives, the person referring to charges must ensure they have good evidence. A few days after Mr. Carlson resigned against Mr. Neiman at the Julius Baird Generation Cup, but before Mr. Carlson spoke out on Twitter, the president of FIDE, Arkady Dvorkovic, released a statement saying we strongly believe that the world champion has, more, has a moral responsibility attached to his status. Since he is viewed as a global ambassador of the game, Mr. Dvorkovic added in an apparent admonishment of Mr. Carlson, we strongly believe that there were better ways to handle the situation. Mr. Dvorkovic did not announce any disciplinary action against Mr. Carlson or Mr. Neiman in the statement. Mr. Neiman, 
acknowledged in an interview earlier this month that he had violated rules of fair play in online tournaments on chess.com at least twice in the past. Some observers consider cheating online to be less serious than cheating in matches played in person. Mr. Dvorkovic explicitly rejected the notion in his statement on behalf of FIDE, we reiterate our zero tolerance policy toward cheating in any form. Whether it is online or over the board, cheating remains cheating. Mr. Djorkovic also called for cooperation between major online platforms, private events, and top players. Now, I think definitely in the past, cheating online was less serious than cheating over the board because uh, you would play chess online to practice, to, to stay sharp, to you know practice your tactics. But these days, there are a lot of tournaments online that have pretty serious prize funds. So... In my humble, in my humble opinion, cheating online in a chess in a in a cash tournament is a big offense. But let's keep going. Earlier this month, Chessicom removed Mr. Neiman from the site and uninvited him from future tournaments amid the cheating allegations. Most notably, of course, the Chessicom Global Championship. The company, which has a well-regarded anti-cheating detection mechanism, is set to merge with Play Magnus Group, which was founded by Mr. Carlson. The chief chess officer of chess.com, Daniel Wrench, addressed rumors that the platform has shared a list of cheaters with Mr. Carlson on Reddit. Nobody from Chess24, chess not even Magnus, is working, has worked or has seen slash been invited to see our systems. Mr. Wrench added that Mr. Carlson was not given a list of cheaters or any inside information about Chess.com's cheating detection algorithms and that Mr. Carlson is and has completely acted 100% on his own knowledge. Not sure where he got it and desires. Another question is how much to trust cheating detection systems to settle the dispute. Ken Reagan an associate professor of computer science and engineering at the University at Buffalo, developed the system trusted by FIDE to detect when a chess player is using computer assistance during a game. After analyzing Mr. Neiman's play over the last two years, Dr. Reagan concluded that he was probably not cheating. But some have questioned how well Reagan's model can detect a player who uses computer assistance only sparingly, maybe once or twice a game at key moments in a scheme to evade detection. I think especially Fabiano spoke out about his model and he felt that it needs to be taken with a grain of salt. If Mr. Neiman is not cheating, the magnitude of his achievement is astounding. At times his play is so accurate that it leaves audiences and opponents alike in disbelief. He may already be the best player in the world, but if Mr. Neiman is cheating, the damage done to the game of chess may prove incalculable. All right, so that was the article from the New York Times. I think they did a really good job of summarizing everything that has been said over the last couple of weeks. I mean, Reagan's model, uh, what Danny said on Twitter, uh, so on Reddit, and uh, all, all, all the statements that have come out. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.